Alice Babs is in Minnesota. She's been on campus at uh, Gustavus Adolphus receiving the Fine Arts Award. And she jammed with Dr. Mark Lammers and a, a fine band this afternoon. Alice Babs, welcome to Minnesota Public Radio. What a privilege to have you here. Thank you very much, Lee. I'm very pleased to hear your voice and to hear Duke Ellington in the background and my voice. Well, that takes us all back to uh, Paris, 19, yes. 1963. I know I first uh, saw you with Ulrich Newman, Bank Talberg, and uh, Sven Das Musen in November of 1960. Yes. At Freddy's in Minneapolis. That was uh, years ago. Yes. About 33 years ago, as a fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was soon be 33 years. How did uh, you and Duke Ellington get together on this project, uh, Serenade to Sweden, that uh, complete production for Gramophone AB Electra? I had just made a TV program, and Duke Ellington called me back to Sweden because he had left Sweden. And uh, he said, can you come tomorrow to Paris and uh, make a recording with me? Of course, I couldn't come the next day, but three days later I was in Paris. And after three days, we had done this recording. When you, uh, when you came into the studio, was it all scored or was it in part improvised? Did you? No, it wasn't. I mean, actually, when I came to Paris, we had nothing. I had just given him telegraphic my ideas of what I would like to do on an LP. And then I met uh, Billy Strayhorn and Duke. That was the start of it. And. Two day, the second day, we went into the studio, and uh, then he had written a background, and, he, and I said, what am, what am I going to sing here? And he said, well, you just sing what you feel like. <laughs> so it was a co-production. Indeed. Uh, so. <laughs> well, I, certainly you, you, you uh, create a lot of material, and... Was Billy there, Billy Strayhorn there? Yes, and when, when we were at the end of the, uh, of the session, uh, Duke wanted some more songs. I had played the piano myself and given him some idea what I could do and the range I had. So uh, then he sent the two of us into a, a little side studio where we two worked out uh, a song I've composed called uh, Babsy. And then we went into the studio and made it. It was fantastic actually the first evening we did two songs and uh, it was very late and i'm not used to working start to work at 11 o'clock in the in the night and ending at four o'clock in the evening <laughs> so i was very tired i think we only did two two songs the first night but then the next day we continued and uh, in the daytime and then we had a session in the evenings and then the the, the album was ready well, it's certainly a treasure. Is it? Uh, I know uh, people all over the country have asked about this uh, this release of Serenade to Sweden. Is it available now in compact disc? Oh, uh, I I hope it. I I really hope it would have been available over the years. I don't know why it isn't because it was. Uh, I think it was reprise. In, in the United States. Yes. And Gramophone AB Electra in yes. Sweden. And it took some time before I was able to release it from Sweden. And then I know that it has been played in Europe and been sold in Europe. And, and um, some have also reached uh, America. Indeed they have. I think it had something to do with Duke had some problems uh, with reprise during that period. Probably contractual and royalty problems. Yes. Alice Babs... Um, when did you first start listening to American jazz? Oh, I was only 12 years old. And I, I heard a recording of Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington, and Mills Brothers. And uh, I know that they have really inspired me to do uh, very unusual things for a young schoolgirl in Sweden. So I started to, to improvise and do growl effects, you know, when I was singing a song. Um, <laughs> and uh, this was so unique, you know, that uh, already when I was only 16 years, I made my first movie. 
and in that I was singing swing songs, and I didn't sing the score as it was composed. I just started to, to improvise. I heard her dig a dig a do, a recording that uh, Duke had uh, recorded, and uh, I heard her Louis Armstrong and Mills Brothers, and the mixture of those of those three uh, names have uh, really inspired me and in my career in the beginning. Did you ever dream that you would uh, get together with Duke and do sessions like these and also those Grace Cathedral and Westminster Abbey sessions? No. I, 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 1941, I started really to, to tell people that I would like to sing with Duke Ellington. So, of course, it was a goal uh, to be able to, but had I been offered that that early, I don't think I would have been the right person to sing with him, but... I continued collecting his recordings, and I went to a professor at the Royal Academy, and uh, my voice was we very well trained when uh, 1963 I was offered to do a TV program with him. And and was that the first? I used my voice as an instrument in his orchestra, so of course it was a very wild dream <laughs> that came true. So it actually was 1963 in the television show that brought you and Duke together for some interaction and performance. Yes. I had seen the orchestra and Duke Ellington and Ivy Anderson, with, uh, a singer I admired very much, on uh, the stage in Stockholm, 1939. I was only 15, and you can imagine what an impression it gave me to see the, that orchestra. And uh, through the listening in uh, gramophone shops, you know, I, I, I understood really how good they were. And so my taste was a little bit different than my friends. How much different from your friends? What were they well, listening to? You know, I mean, my friends, they, they couldn't uh, understand the harmonies of Duke Ellington's orchestra with the things they were playing. But um, he was my favorite very, very early. And, and I had a very big collection of Duke Ellington recordings. So I think also when I met him, I could tell him and Billy Rayhorn how much I admired their work. And they in turn admired you, I'm sure. Well, we got the right contact from the beginning. Uh, and uh, I started to improvise <laughs> because uh, I, I was not scared when suddenly I met Duke Ellington in the studio. So in between the rehearsals we had, he sat at the piano and I frankly started to sing when he, when he was uh, fiddling around with harmonies. And, and uh, I think that made him uh, interested in me as a singer, not only my voice, but that I could improvise and add uh, a melody. And, and he had an idea that you should improvise uh, a little bit outside the harmony, and I did so. Indeed, you were much like, I suppose, Ben Webster and uh, uh, Cootie Williams and uh, all of those fine artists who embellished his music. Yes, and, and uh, Johnny Hodges also was a favorite of mine very early. And his way of gliding, you know, between, I mean, if you listen to Serenade to Sweden, you can hear that um, it's more instrumental than usually singers are singing. You had mentioned... What has to do with that? I've been listening so much, not so much to singers, but to the instrumentalists, and, and especially Duke Ellington's soloists. Alice Babs, I just want to mention for our listeners, if you just dialed in, we're talking with Alice Babs, and you hear her every Saturday night on this program. And she is in Minnesota and has received an award, a fine arts award, from Gustavus Adolphus in St. Peter.